alkaline endpoint with a pH of 8.3. T-alkalinity is for total alkalinity, which is titrated to a pH of approximately 4.6. Anytime you're about to handle chemicals, you need to wear the proper safety equipment. In order to perform a drop count test, gloves and safety glasses are required. The first step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to take an accurate sample. The smallest change in sample size will lead to inaccurate results. Before taking your sample, it's important to rinse the vial with the sample to be tested. This minimizes the chance of contamination from a previous titration. To get an accurate sample size, you want to hold the vial close to eye level. Once you feel you have an accurate sample, place the vial on a level surface and bend down to eye level to make sure you have an accurate sample. When performing a drop count titration, a white background can provide contrast to better see the color changes. A cabinet tray or a white paper towel can provide that contrast. The next step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to add three drops of phenolphthalein indicator. The bottle contains a dropper tip so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent it's important to swirl the vial to make sure the reagents are properly mixed. In this example the sample is turned pink indicating that there is p-alkalinity that needs to be titrated. The next step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to perform the titration. Each bottle of titrant is labeled with the equivalency and sample size it was manufactured for. It's important to make sure you have the proper titrant and the proper sample size for this titration. The bottle of titrant contains a dropper tip vertically to make sure you get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each drop of titrant, you want to swirl the vial to make sure the sample is properly mixed. According to the endpoint ID procedure, the titration is complete when the sample is changed from pink to colorless. In this example, each drop was equivalent to 10 parts per million of alkalinity. The sample took 13 drops to reach the endpoint, therefore, the p-alkalinity of our sample is 130 parts per million as calcium carbonate. Write down this result and continue with the test. The next step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to add three drops of the total alkalinity indicator. The bottle contains a dropper tip so it's important to hold the bottle vertically to get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each reagent it's important to swirl the vial to make sure the reagents are properly mixed. In this example the sample is turned green indicating that there is still alkalinity that needs to be titrated. The next step according to the endpoint ID procedure is to perform the titration. Each bottle of titrant is labeled with the equivalency and sample size it was manufactured for. It's important to make sure you have the proper titrant and the proper sample size for this titration. The bottle of titrant contains a dropper tip, therefore it's important to hold the bottle vertically to make sure you get a consistent drop size. After the addition of each drop of titrant, you want to swirl the vial to make sure the sample is properly mixed. According to the endpoint ID procedure, the titration is complete when the sample is changed from green to red. In this example, the titration took another 13 drops to reach endpoint. With the 13 drops from the first titration, it has taken a total of 26 drops. Each drop was equivalent to 10 parts per million of alkalinity. Therefore, the sample contains 260 parts per million of total alkalinity as calcium carbonate. This concludes our demonstration of the PNT alkalinity drop count test kit.